It's six league wins out of six at the start of the season for Manchester City to go five clear at the top. They've beaten Nottingham Forest 2-0. The opening goal scored by Phil Foden, assisted by Kyle Walker. And we can hear from Walker now. Well, Kyle, congratulations. It was a very different second half to the first half. How proud of your team that you were able to keep hold of the victory and a clean sheet as well with 10 men for so long? Yeah, I mean, the the clean sheet's important. You know, we've let a couple of softly goals in recently, but um, I think the lads dug in today and showed, you know, just how determined we are to go and achieve great things this year. It's not often you see Pep Guardiola making a defensive change to five at the back with yep. still half an hour to go, but you do sometimes have to show different qualities in these sort of circumstances. You learn more about your players and your teammates in this sort of... Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Obviously, it's not ideal going down to 10 men, but, um, you know, the manager's made the changes and we have to adapt to that. Uh, obviously, the game's changed in the second half with the sending off, but it's something that, you know, we, we, we have to do. You know, the main thing is getting the three points and moving on to, you know, the next game, which is in midweek. When you looked at that incident for the red card for Rodri, you weren't far away from it. Normally your team is so calm and composed. What happened? It's just, uh, obviously, these emotions running high in the game and he's definitely not a one to start raising his hand. So I was a little bit surprised when the ref showed the red, but you know I see it in a quick flash and I don't have a replay. So the referee's made the decision. They have to stand by the ref's decision. But as a person, as a human, I, I don't think he's got that in him. When you look back at that first goal and your role in it, it's a brilliant assist. It was the second most passes ever recorded in the Premier League for a goal. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing you weren't counting them at the time, but what does that say about the quality in this team? We're talking about different qualities in the second half. That's City, isn't it? No, it's just about obviously being patient when they've got a low block of flat, uh, five and everyone narrow in the middle. You're going to have to move them. You're going to have to get some passes for you to find your gaps. Obviously, Rogers picked me out fantastically well and I've set the ball back to Phil, but sometimes you need them goals you need them goals just to settle the nerves when it's going to be a difficult game uh, you know we've got one in the second half of Merlin as well and you kind of think okay is it going to be three or four but you know it's come out it's a second uh, different game in the second half probably Erling should have scored but they've had some good chances and Eddie's kept us in it with some good saves so listen we've shown grit and determination to you know to what's needed in the Premier League and we move on now and we dust ourselves down and get on with the game on uh, Wednesday Phil Foden stepped up again hasn't he? Yeah, Phil's, Phil's been class, I think, to the back end of last season. He's probably not played as much as he wanted to play, but um, I think Phil, whenever people write him off, he always comes back and proves them wrong. You have to uh, still understand he's still very young and he's still learning and he's still going to have you know, a lot of fire in his belly to go and prove the manager wrong. But as long as he keeps putting in performances like he has done since the start of the season, I don't think he can be dropped, but I'm not the manager, so I don't make them decisions. Thanks, Carl. Cheers, thank you. Well done, mate. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant interview with Carl Walker, who continues his red-hot form at the minute. Um, yeah, I think he's been fantastic. He's just getting better and better at all the things around his game. I think that touch today to set up Foden's goal showed that because normally people say he's not that good in the final third, but that shows there's, there's another side to him because it's, it's a hard challenge to do what he did. All he did was take this thing out of the ball and make sure it was in the right place for Foden to run on and, and obviously get a clean strike from it. And the movement off the ball was fantastic as well. Yeah, as, as we all know, uh, pace is his main strength, is Carl Walker's, but... To have the, the wherewithal, I suppose, to cushion this pass for Phil Foden after what was an incredible team build-up. It was a fantastic team build-up. Like I said, he, he got there early, so he had time to calm down. But once he just leaves his leg there, and I'm not going to try and count all these, because like I said, it's, <laughs> it's moving way too quick. 46 but, in the end. Yeah, but it was... Um, yeah. Fantastic movement. Doku does well when he comes inside and gets it to Rodri at the, at the end. And then Carl's walk, Carl Walker's run when he actually sees it. But you can see they're just moving that shape around to get to where they got to in the end. But it's a fantastic play from City. It's a great team goal. This is amazing, that the, the patience, isn't it? Like Carl Walker said, is we're waiting for the moment that Tavares switches off and the moment where him highlighted there can get into that space. But it's a brilliant ball from, from Rodri in behind. And then, like you said, just cushions it back for Foden who spins in. And... Even for Walker, everyone else will think he's going to put it across the goal, so they're running towards it, and then he kind of falls in with that drop back um, because they're all going to probably keep their eye on Haaland. But um, it was just a patient, lovely build-up of a goal from City. Yeah. 46 passes, uh, as we said earlier, the second longest sequence since records began uh, in 2006-2007. I suppose for Pep Guardiola, that's the ultimate goal for him, isn't it? 
as many passes as yeah. possible for a goal, yeah. Because we, we were, I was speaking to you about it, wasn't I? I was like, like, do you reckon they do loads of defensive training? And you're like, no, nah, they just defence is how you keep the ball. So if you keep the ball, the other team can't attack. So that's your defence. So, I mean, keeps control. Nice build-up goal. Um, it did flip the second half, as we know, but. I think he'd be overall happy, Pep yeah. Guardiola. Erling Haaland's already got his eighth league goal of the season. We're only six games into this season. I think last season's total could well be eclipsed. Um, but they made the, mo- the most of regaining possession there. Yeah, I mean, again, clearance from, from Forrest is poor, but this is brilliant there. Just hang it up around the back post from, from Nunez. And again, look, poor clearance, but it's the combination play. Look, little over, it sees Foden, then Foden slips him in. And then just dink it to the main man who's just going to head it in. And he's, he's missed a couple today, but he wasn't going to miss that one. You know, it is his bread and butter, as we speak, about power and just get it on target and 2-0, really. His hanging time's impressive. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he was something. Can we put yourself in the same bracket? I want to see this. I want to see this. I'll show you in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's fantastic. The way he steps he leaves Bolly and everybody else to go towards the ball and he takes like two steps back almost he knows that the ball's going to be hanged up and once it's once it's hanged up he's just got all the time in the world to place it back across the goalkeeper where he yeah. come from which is next to nearly impossible once the keeper's gone so far that way so City and cruise control going to the second half 2-0 up but then they make life slightly difficult for themselves what was Rodri thinking here when he squared up to Morgan Gibbs White, Sean? <coughs> you know well, I think um, Walker hit the nail on the head in his interview. I've never seen Rodri as this type of player or I wouldn't expect it. So I gather something got said. But with that all said, you can't do what he's done as much as I'd love, <laughs> love to defend him. I can't. You can't put two hands around the throat. But um, yeah. Karen highlighted something. From this angle, it actually looks like the second one's not his hand. Might, yeah, it might have it, been... <laughs> Foden, but you can't see it from this one, but the other. I mean, it, 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 Rodri's definitely got his, his hand around his neck, but but I, I think, yes, he's lost his call, but there's a bigger picture here for Rodri now. Yeah. How many games he misses Absolutely. in the field up for City? That's, that's the thing where I think Pep Guardiola would be like, well, yeah, we're winning this game, it's not ideal, but what are the consequences Tenses. for losing my most influential player, yeah, really? Yeah, that is his first career red, incidentally, and you allude to the importance of the games coming up. He misses Arsenal away at the Emirates Stadium. And we know that's going to be a huge game, albeit at this early stage of the season. But he's been one of their standout performers so far. Um, he has done for, for me a number of years. He's the thing that makes City tick. Yeah. Especially playing out from the back. How big a blow is that to miss the Arsenal game? Massive. Um, it's massive. But I think at the same time where those situations happen, it, it's a chance for somebody else to maybe step out of the shadows and show that they are capable of filling that role or if anything does happen, being able to sit in there and do the job that they need to do. Yeah. I think, Cat, sorry, it gives Pep a chance to maybe even mix something else up because if Roger was available, Arsenal would expect that. Again, you would never be surprised with a curveball with Pep now if this no, presented true. itself. Uh, but for Forrest, one quick word. Disappointed they didn't yeah. get at City when they were down to 10 men as much? Yeah, was, when Man City go to a back five, you're thinking, well, they don't th- go for it. You had nothing to lose. And I thought with the subs coming on, I thought mm. they would have had more of a go. So I was disappointed in the second half with them. OK, let's bring you up to date with the two other games that have reached 